कुरातो जिने गुरातो जिने ज्ञान की जड़िया दई ज्ञान की जड़िया दई इट वॉज अ कोर्टशिप दट बिगैन विद लेटर्स नॉट लेटर्स टू इच अदर बट लेटर्स थ्रू अ कॉमन कजन सत्य who would later be filled with amusement at the romance blossoming between her cousins unknowingly or perhaps even knowingly it was she who sparked off the tender romance between the two spirited artists maima then a young gold medalist in fine arts from chennai stella maris college dabbled in watercolors and paintings while manohar a scientist by profession like sketches caricatures and cartoons Satya and Mahima were holidaying in Kodaikanal with their family when Satya received a letter from Manohar with several illustrations and a small caricature of himself Mahima found it charming A month later when Mahima finally met Manohar it was the caricature that led her to recognize him I thoroughly enjoyed Manu's letter and I loved the sketches that he sent Satya especially his caricature When I saw him a month later I recognized him instantly Satya's mother Saro sent a formal letter of proposal to her cousin Manohar's mother for a marriage alliance In a plain inland form Saro wrote that young Mahima was an academically brilliant and gifted lady of quiet dignity and great serenity and yet she wasn't a staid girl saro hastened to assure manohar's mother because her niece also had a keen sense of humor that mahima was a medium complexioned was something his mother ought to know but then her niece was very attractive and charming as a doe saro declared proudly so it was agreed by all concerned that saro's very attractive medium complexion serenely quiet brilliant niece with a good sense of humor and the charm of a doe and manohar should get married once two months before we got married we went to see the movie to kill a mockingbird in one scene The child heroine goes to sleep with a teddy bear by her side. I asked Mahi, "Mahi, as a child, did you take a teddy bear with you when you went to sleep?" She replied, "No, I didn't, but after 2 months, I'll be sleeping with one." I laughed so boisterously that the quiet of the movie house was disturbed. In my next letter to her, I sent her an appropriate cartoon. Three years after our wedding, we were blessed with a child. We both had wanted a daughter, and our wishes were granted when joyous little Sujata entered our lives. A year later Manohar began to realize that his eyesight was failing him especially after nightfall Manohar was to learn later that he suffered from a syndrome called retinitis pigmentosa a condition where retina progressively degenerate it is a condition for which there is no known cure
partial night blindness was only the beginning, but Manohar did not know this then. That year, Manohar left for the USA for a master's in chemistry at Oberlin College in Ohio, where Mahima and Sujatha were to join him in a year. At Oberlin, the academic pressure in the chemistry department, especially during the first semester, was grueling. Despite this, Manohar found time to send letters and illustrations to Mahima. Summer gave way to fall, and fall to the beauty of winter snow. And then came spring. And with spring, Mahima and Sujata came to Oberlin. It was their ninth wedding anniversary. With a prayer on her lips, Mahima lit the traditional five-wick brass lamp. Barely had the lamp been placed on the windowsill, when a sudden gust of wind blew the curtain like a sail. The slender lamp fell with a clang, and its stem broke into two pieces at the neck. But all five weeks continued to burn almost defiantly. And then, three days after their anniversary, it happened. The accident. Manohar, Sajata and Manohar's mother escaped without even a minor injury. But Mahima was not so lucky. The accident crippled and consigned Mahima to a life in the wheelchair. Had Mahima's life been limited to a life in a wheelchair, then I wouldn't have found it so hard to bear. But oh, the curse that had fallen upon her was far, far worse. Mahima was paralyzed for life below her shoulders, with only patchy sensory perceptions. <laughs> It was late evening in October when Manohar brought Mahima home. The bungalow on Palace Road was more alive than it had been in a long time. Manohar's car pulled into the driveway with Mahima in the front seat. At first, only Handel's Hallelujah chorus was heard. On the front steps was a beautiful column. Below it, the words Welcome Home were inscribed. Aram lilies, asters and tuberoses fill the house with their fragrance. The brief musical piece was as triumphant and exuberant as the moment was. Mahima Devdas had come home. Mahima was transferred from the car to the wheelchair. Sujata came running to sit on her mother's lap. The child was filled with laughter and wonderment as the wheelchair rolled up the newly built ramp to the veranda. When the music ended, there was a moment of silence. Mahima did not say a word, nor did she smile or cry. Manohar's mother came forward to kiss Mahima. I am so glad you are back home, my beloved daughter, she said. That was when Mahima broke down and cried. What was it that drew people to her? I wondered. It was not so much her looks, but her warm personality and her quiet courage that attracted people and inspired goodwill. From the time I met her, I saw that people were, for unknown reasons, 
extraordinarily kind to Mahima. From statesmen to clergymen, from storekeepers to floor sweepers, both men and women trusted Mahima and tended to be warm and helpful to her. I saw with amazement that everyone in the hospital was drawn to her. Even my brother wrote to me, if she can stir a hospital clamped down to a bed, what can't she do when she begins moving about in a wheelchair? I was convinced more than ever that Mahi would always be surrounded by people who loved her and would be kind to her. In spite of all the wonderful people in my life, I knew that it was Mano that I needed the most. I knew I would never be lonely as long as Mano was around. It was his presence that always gave me the strength to fight my battle. Ab to hai tumse har khushi apni Ab to hai tumse har khushi apni Tum pe marna I'm mm-hmm.